Hi, this is Professor Wolber from AppInventor.org and University of San Francisco. I'm going to show you how to build the Android Match. It's a mole mash game. And we're going to start with a starter app, actually. So I want you to go to AppInventor.org slash starter apps. And there's this Android Mash Starter.aia. And this is just a file that has the images we're going to use for this app. So I just downloaded it to my computer. Okay. And now I'm going to go to App Inventor, App Inventor 2, um, and I'm going to import that starter app. So I'm going to go to Project and Import and choose File. And if I go to my downloads, I'm going to see this Android Mash Starter open it up, and voila, it's going to come into App Inventor. And, and the reason I did this, just so I don't have to you know, upload a bunch of images, you know, in this case there's only three media files, but we're going to use them in our project. Okay, and you'll notice I've already set the title for the starter app um, you know, for the screen title. Um, and if you look down lower, there are these three files, and these are the files we're going to use. Okay, so I'm going to build a kind of whack a mole mole mash game. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is drag in a canvas. So I'm going to go to drawing and animation, drag in a canvas component. The canvas component is you know, one of these kind of panels within your screen, and this is where you can do either images or animation, okay? Or you can do drawing, like you might have seen if you've done the paint pot app. Whenever you draw, bring a canvas in, you're usually going to choose fill parent for its width, okay? And for its height, in this case, I'm going to choose, I don't know, 400 pixels, okay? So fill parent basically says, I want my canvas to go all the way across, and the height's going to be 400. So we're, we're going to end up having some stuff below here. Okay, so I've got my canvas set up, and I'm just going to go grab the background. Like I said, we've got some image files already in here, and I'm going to go for my background image and choose this Android Lock 2. It's one I downloaded earlier, and it kind of looks like a little grassy area, but kind of like a phone, and it's got some holes where uh, you know, a mole might jump out. In, in our case, the mole is going to be a little Android guy. All right, so I've got a canvas here. The only thing that can live on canvases are balls and image sprites. And they're really the same thing, but an image sprite can have a, an image file associated with it. And these guys can, you know, basically be animated on these canvases. So I'm going to drag in an image sprite. And right now, there's no image file associated with it, of course, so I need to set one. So I'm going to go over to its picture property, okay, and I'm going to choose the Android teacher, and voila, I've got this little guy who's going to be my character. Okay, so this is an image sprite, and image sprites can only live in canvases. In fact, if I try to drag one and stick it somewhere else, it's just going to disappear. You notice it didn't, didn't go anywhere. So I'm going to quickly, I want to name my image sprite, I'm going to name it... Um, Android Sprite, just to give it a more descriptive name, okay? And now I've got my canvas, I've got my Android Sprite. I'm going to add one more component, and actually two, two more components. I'm going to add, from the media component, I'm going to add a sound. And this is so we can vibrate um, when, when we touch this Sprite. So this guy's going to be jumping around. When we touch him, I'm going to want to vibrate. And the way you vibrate is with the sound component, okay? Finally, I'm going to add a clock component. And this is going to allow us to do animation. We want him to jump around like every half second or every second. Um, right now, our clock's going to be set so it goes off every second or every 1,000 milliseconds, which is a second. Okay? So I've kind of set up my designer now, and now it's time to um, build my uh, behaviors. Now I'm going to show you how to design the behavior of the app. And I'm going to click on Blocks, and this is going to bring up the Blocks Editor. And this is kind of how you show the event response uh, behavior of the app. Okay, in this case, we want this Android sprite to kind of move around randomly as time goes by. Okay, so our event in this case is a clock.timer event. The event is time passing. Um, so this guy's going to get triggered a bunch of times. You know, how often? Well, if you go back to the designer, you can look at the clock component. It's got a timer interval of 1,000, so 1,000 milliseconds, one second. That means that this block is going to be triggered every one second. Okay, so what do we want to happen? Well, we want that sprite to move um, every time 
time, uh, a second goes by. So let's move down and find the move to operation. And so every one second, we want our sprite to move. The X is the horizontal location, and the Y is the vertical location in our kind of XY coordinate system. Okay, so where do we want to move? Well, we could just put some numbers in there. You know, like I could put uh, 200 here for X and, and kind of copy this guy. So I'll do Command C and Command V. So if I do this, after a second, my sprite should move to about the middle of the screen, 200, 200. So let's try it out. The way you test, and you know, I've got my phone showing up on screen here, and it's showing App Inventor 2 Companion. If I click on Scan QR Code, um, it's going to let me scan uh, a QR code. If I go to App Inventor and choose AI Companion, it brings up that code for me. And right now, I'm just holding my phone up to the QR code, scanning it. And it's going to be nice. It's going to show my app on screen. And there it is. And I don't know if you just noticed, but the little Android man moved from its starting position. And I guess this is 200, 200 right over here on, on our screen. And it makes sense. Our width, I think, is about 300. And our height is 350, 350 I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Our canvas, our height is 400. So yeah, I guess it's about halfway down, 200, 200. Okay, back in the blocks, um, so we're, every time the clock goes off, we're moving 200, 200. That's, that's not what we want. Really, we want to randomly move it, okay? So I'm going to go to the math uh, drawer, and there's this block called random integer, okay? And I'm going to actually pull out two of these guys, because we're going to want one for the uh, X and one for the Y, okay? Instead of 200, 200, we're going to put in these blocks. Okay, and notice uh, when the block was empty, it gave me a little error, but I kind of filled that up. And right now, you're going to see the Android man staying at location 200 on the horizontal, but kind of randomly moving from 1 to 100 on the uh, horizontal. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same for Y, and I think you'll see that he moves up higher. There's our error again. Okay, so now he's going to kind of, I think, be in this little box here. It's not exactly what we want. We don't really want um, from 1 to 100, 1 to 100. Okay, I could change these to 300 and 400, but it's much better to use abstract terms. So I'm going to use the canvas width. Okay, so I'm going to go over to canvas, and I'm going to find its width property. Okay, and I'm going to replace the 100 with width, all right, because our x can be from 1 to the whole width of the canvas. And then for Y, I'm going to do the same, but I'll grab the height. And if I go down and find the height property, here it is. And I'll replace that 100 with it. Okay, and now I think he's going to be jumping around just about everywhere. There he goes. Okay, so we've got our random movement happening. And let me kind of clean up our blocks editor here. Um, next thing we're going to do is show, I'll show you how to make it so you can make him vibrate when he gets touched. This is actually simpler, okay? What I want to do is go to Android Sprite, and he's got an event called Touched. So every time Android Sprite, this little dude, every time he's touched, I want to vibrate the phone. And vibrate is a function within the sound component. And if I go to sound, I can find vibrate. I can tell it how long I want to vibrate for. So I'm going to grab a math block and uh, drag him in. And I'm going to vibrate him for half a second. So I'll say 500. OK. And now, I'm hold, like I said, I'm holding my phone in my hand. I'm going to try to hit him. And you, you can hear the vibration because i got my phone actually sitting on, on the table here. OK. So these are kind of the two basic uh, behaviors for, for this app. Next thing I want to do is show you kind of a subtle change, but um, you know, right when the app starts, right now the Android Sprite just shows up in the, the same place every time. And then after a second, it kind of randomly changes. But I want to make it so it randomly gets placed right when the app starts. And inside screen, there's this um, event handler called Initialize. And this is really when the, you know, when the when screen or the app starts up, you can make something happen. 
And kind of what we want to happen is for the sprite to be randomly moved. So I'm going to copy that move to block and move it within the screen initialize. So now when the app begins, and let's go ahead and move this guy down a little bit. When the app begins, we're going to randomly place the Android man, and also after every second, we'll randomly place it. Okay, so it's kind of a subtle change, but but it's it's a nice one. Um, and one reason I wanted to show it to you is because I want to talk about procedures. And procedures are kind of collections of blocks. You can kind of give a name to a bunch of complicated blocks. So I want to give a name to these complicated blocks that we've kind of copy pasted in two places. Okay, and you do that with procedures. So I'm going to go over to procedures and drag out this two block. And I'm going to change the name to move random. Okay, so kind of what I'm doing is creating a new block and naming it move random. And what I'm going to do, I'll actually just kind of copy this guy and move it over into the procedure. Okay, and what I'm saying is to move random means to do this complicated stuff. Okay, the nice thing is once I've defined that, I can make all the places that need it, all the places that call it, can become much simpler. Okay, so I'm going to drag these guys out and put them in the trash. Okay, remember they're, they're two exact copies, right? And what I can do is once I've created this procedure, I now have a new block. If I go over to the procedures drawer, there it is. I can just call move random. And I can copy that guy, Command C, Command V, stick it in screen, initialize. And now my app's a little simpler, right? I've got this wonderful new block, which is understandable, right? It's readable. If, if I'm reading this app, I can understand what it means. If I want to see the details of it, I can look up here. Um, but anywhere I use it, I can just use it with this one block. Okay, so it kind of eliminates redundancy, okay? And for a big app, this one's pretty small, for a big app, Man, most software gets big really fast. Um, it really simplifies things. And also, kind of makes you think kind of in a top-down manner. Okay, oh, I need to move something randomly. Let's first build this procedure to do it, um, get rid of those complications, and then use it elsewhere. So anyway, that's a little introduction to procedures. Okay, finally, let's, let's take a look at our, at our app here. We've got three event handlers, okay? We do something when the sprite's touched. We do something when the timer's triggered. So the passing of time is an event and we respond to it. And we do something when the app starts. But our app is these three event handlers. Um, we call things, we do things to the phone um, when those events occur. Finally, we can kind of break things out into these procedures and make our own blocks, okay? And within our event handlers, we can then call these procedures we've created. So anyway, this is a pretty good example of a, a small app that but but has a lot of the basic building blocks that you'll see in, in most apps.